Hi everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at how an MRI presents cross-sectional imaging and hopefully at the end of this video you guys will begin to understand how to go through some of your own MRI scans. Okay everyone, so what we've got pulled up here is an actual knee MRI scan. And if you'll notice that uh, there are three windows here. And each one of these windows represents a, def a different uh, perspective on this knee MRI. And so you can see how I can scroll through as I click on each window, you can see how I can scroll through each set of images. And that's really what the MRI is. It's a set of cross-sectional images uh, through uh, a structure. And so let's start on the image on the left. And this is the uh, coronal uh, perspective on the MRI. This is as if we're looking straight at the knee. The top right is what we call the axial, and that's if we are looking uh, through a cut straight through it as if, uh, if you imagine a loaf of bread or like a log that you cut right in half and then you look at it end on, that's what the axial is if we did the same thing through the knee. And then finally, the window on the bottom right down here, that is the sagittal sequence, which is looking at the knee from the side. <clears throat> so let's return back to this coronal over here, the big window on the left. And what you might notice is as I start scrolling through this image, you're noticing these yellow lines moving through each one of these uh, other images. And these are called localizer lines, and they help us understand where we are in each image in reference to the other images or other perspectives on the MRI scan. So for example, let's look up at the axial up here. This is the front of the knee or anterior. This is the back of the knee or posterior. And this is the uh, outer side of the knee called lateral, and this is the inner side of the knee called medial. And if you notice, as I start, let's start all the way at the front of the knee. And so here on the coronal, you can just make, uh, you can just see our kneecap, our patella. And if you look over here, our localizer line is showing us where this coronal image is looking through in relation to the axial image. And then if we go down here to the bottom right, we'll go to about right here, we can see uh, this is the front of the knee, this is the back of the knee, and if we go back to our coronal image, we can see here's our patella, here's where we are in relation to the axial sequence, and here's where we are in relation to the sagittal sequence. And so as we start moving back to the, uh, moving through to the back or posterior part of the knee, you can see how our localizer lines are starting to move towards the back of the knee. And so you can see how that's moving in the back on the axial, and you can see how that's moving towards the back on the sagittal. And so let's, uh, let's do one other uh, example here. So we'll go down on our bottom right. We're sitting at this image here. And here's on our coronal image. Here's the lateral side of the knee. Here's the medial side of the knee. And again, here's our axial image. And here's the lateral, and here's the medial side. So if we're looking on our sagittal and we're moving from lateral to medial on our sagittal view, we'll start, uh, let me get you repositioned. Okay, so here we are. So we're gonna start moving medial and you can start seeing how as we're moving through on the sagittal, our localizer line is starting to move through the knee from lateral to medial on the axial and over here on the coronal from lateral uh, to medial as well. And so you can definitely see how each one of these different uh, images gives us different perspectives on the different anatomy of the knee and helps us really localize pathology, injuries, and things like that. Okay, everybody, so in order to help demonstrate uh, the cross-sectional imaging that an MRI produces, uh, I've got three pieces of fruit here, and each one has varying um, uh, complexities regarding their shape. And so you can see this is you know, kind of a sphere shape, this is an oblong shape, 
and this has uh, a lot of uh, different ridges and things like that. And so each one of these has um, you know, different complexities in how the MRI would uh, produce uh, cuts or cross-sectional imaging through it. And so we'll start off with the uh, more simple shape here. So again, here's the knee cross-sectional imaging. And I hope to show you guys how we can produce the same thing with the fruit to illustrate how the MRI produces the actual images through the object. Okay, so when the MRI makes imaging uh, through an object, it will create imaging uh, by making slices through the object, essentially. So we can make cuts through the object like this, and we can make cuts through the object like this. And then the MRI presents that imaging uh, as a cross-sectional image. And so we'll demonstrate that right now. So if we start going through this apple like this, we can, uh, we'll start right off on the edge here. And we'll just keep working our way across. Just like that. And so now I can reassemble my apple here. Just like that. And we can take a close up look and we can see how all those cuts go through the apple. And as we look at that on cross section, we can see how that apple looks. Just like that. And so that's one way of looking through this object uh, on cross-sectional imaging, just like that. And you can see how the shape um, changes as we move through it. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the apple in a little bit different orientation. So instead of going through like this, we're gonna start going through like this. And I want you to uh, pay attention to how the, um, the appearance of the apple and the cross section changes. And so we'll start in this orientation, just like this. We'll just keep working our way through. through the middle here. Maybe one more actually. Okay. All right, so now, now that we've gone through this, let's reassemble the apple. Okay. So now you can see we've made our cuts coming from top down just like that. And so if we start looking at our apple in this orientation on the cross section, we can see how that apple uh, looks as we start going through it. Just like that. And so you can definitely see how we go from the original shape, which is you know, something like that, all the way to this shape as we start moving through the cross section. If I hold both of these um, both of these apples up, you can see the difference in how the different cuts have gone through. So one's coming in from the side like this, and the other is coming from top down. Okay, so we're going to take our next object here, and because of the uh, the shape, we can we can make a few different cross sectional cuts through it. So we can make some cross sectional cuts through it like this. 
we can make some cross-sectional cuts through it like this. And we can make some cross-sectional cuts through it like that. And so let's do those now. Okay, so we're going to start off with our cross-sectional cuts going like this. And so we'll start off up here on the stem. It's kind of ripe, so it's hard to cut. Okay, so now that we've made our cuts, we're going to reassemble and we can see all the cross sections through here. So hopefully you can see how that looks. And then as we go through the cross sections, we can see at first, all we see is that, that part of the stem. And then as we move through, we start seeing more and more of the object. And so we'll just kind of keep moving through just like that. And so these are the cross sections through it. And this is how it looks in this particular orientation. And so when we make the cuts through in a different orientation, we'll see how the appearance changes with each one of those. Okay, so now we're gonna make some cuts uh, through in this orientation. And we'll start right up on the edge here. And then we'll make one more cut. So here's, here's where it gets interesting. So you can see we've made our last cut right here. And as we make a cut in moving across, you can see how our cut actually cuts right here and right here, but there's nothing in the middle. And so, um, and that's very common when it comes to uh, anatomy uh, through like a knee MRI or through a shoulder MRI. Okay, so now we're going to reassemble. And as we go through each one of these, you can see how our cross-sectional image changes. We'll keep moving across. And so here's where we get where we made that cut through here and here but missed everything in the middle and so it actually looks like we see two objects on that image and then finally the last cut just like that and then of course you can take as many cuts as you want uh, through the object okay so for the last cut we're going to make our cuts going in this direction and so we'll start let's kind of start like this because of the shape, it's going to be a little bit hard to get all of our cuts through, but there's the orientation like that. I'll do maybe one more through the middle here. And then one more like that. But you can see how the cross section looks in uh, this particular orientation. And so we will, uh, so we'll compare this to the uh, other cuts that we did a moment ago. Okay, so we're going to start by making some cuts moving from top to bottom. And as we do that, if we assemble it, it's getting kind of juicy, we can see how our cross section 
once again changes. And so we've got this interesting shape just like that. And so that's why I picked this because I thought it'd be interesting to look at and how the shape changes. And so easily you can see how all that orientation changes on the fruit as we move through it. And so let's take a look at how it looks from the other direction. Okay, so we're gonna make some cuts uh, going through the fruit um, in this orientation just like that. All right, so let's bring this back together to illustrate our point. And so we've made the cuts through the fruit like this. And so now you can see our cross section is really just this small sliver here. And then again, as we move towards the center, we can see how the cross section changes. It gets a little bit bigger as we're moving towards the middle. We get a cross section that looks like that now and then one more big one just like that, and then like that. And so as we move from outside to inside, we're just, we're just catching this little bit, of the, uh, little bit of the fruit here, and that's why the shape or the image changes as we're moving from um, outer towards the more central part of the fruit. And this is really applicable uh, with anatomical structures because a lot of the anatomical structures are irregularly shaped and so they will have this appearance of being small and then getting bigger as you move through in the cross section. Okay so here's the axial view through the apple and you can see as we start moving sequentially through each cut you can see how the apple changes as we go through the core and then down through the middle of the apple. On this view, more of a coronal, we're going from the side and working in, and you can see how the shape of the apple changes with each one of these cuts. On this banana, moving through the axial, we start at the stem where it's really small, and then we start moving through the body of the banana, you can see how the shape changes as we get to the thicker part of it. We're just moving through the banana, and the banana is pretty uniform in the middle, so the shape doesn't necessarily change too much. On the sagittal, also coming from a side, you can see how the uh, banana starts off kind of a smaller cross section, and as we move more towards the middle of the banana, the shape or the size enlarges and the shape thickens. And then on this last cut, we're cutting through two different parts of the banana so we can see two different images on the screen. And then finally on this coronal view, we can see the banana sort of uh, on face as we move through it. Finally, for this last piece of fruit, we can see the complex shape as we move actually through it. And the, uh, the fruit is actually star-shaped, but looking at it from the front, it doesn't quite give that appearance, but we're moving through it with each one. And right when we get to the middle, we can see that the cross-sectional image is the biggest, but then as we go towards the end, the shape shrinks back down. Coming from the side now, we, we catch one of those, uh, uh, those points of the star, but it actually looks different on this coronal type image as we're moving through the fruit. And as we move through the fruit to the middle of the uh, body of it, you can see how the shape thickens up again. So hopefully with our demonstration with the fruit, we've been able to show how cross-sectional imaging through different shaped objects uh, produces uh, certain images and by understanding that, uh, hopefully, uh, you'll begin to learn how to go through uh, your own MRI scans.